the the harmonic series is this series right here. Uh, the sum of 1 over n starting starting really anywhere. Um, but if we start at 1, we can't start at 0, I guess. So I shouldn't say anywhere. But if we start at 1, we get 1 plus 1 half plus 1 third plus 1 fourth plus 1 fifth and so on. Uh, we use the integral test to show that this series does what? Does it converge or diverge? It diverges, yes. So the harmonic series itself diverges. What I want to look at right now is the alternating harmonic series. So I want to look at the sum of this. Now, it actually doesn't have to be n plus 1 here. It could just be negative 1 to the n. Uh, if it was negative 1 to the n, then the first term would be negative. And so it would start with a negative, but it would still alternate. So that would be okay. I want the first term here to be positive. So this right here, this sum is going to be 1 minus 1 half plus 1 third minus 1 fourth and so on. Right? Okay, so let's use the alternating series test to see if this is going to converge. Um, what do we need to check? Okay, we need to check if the terms decrease. So we're looking at the absolute value of the terms. So really that's just going to be this part right here. We need to show that's decreasing. So to show that's decreasing, we're going to compare the nth term to the n plus first term, which is going to be 1 over n plus 1. Uh, what's going to be bigger, 1 over n or 1 over n plus 1? 1 over n, right. So we're dividing by a bigger number here, which is going to make it smaller. So this right here shows that it's decreasing. That's good. Um, we also know it's an alternating series because of this. We've got that checked. So we've got the alternating series. We've got a decreasing series. We also need to show that the what? The limit as n approaches infinity of the terms 1 over n approach 0. Well, what is 1 over infinity? That's 0. So all three, all three of the conditions are satisfied. So we would write, and I'm not going to take the time to write it here, uh, but we would write that since the alternating series decreases in absolute value to zero, so that hits all three of the conditions, then the series converges due to the alternating series test. Now, here's the interesting thing about this series. Um, we know that this series, one minus one half plus one third minus one fourth, uh, we know that converges due to the alternating series test. <laughs> What's interesting is if I just take the positive terms, so in this case the positive terms are the 1, 1 third, uh, the next positive term is going to be 1 fifth. So if I just take the positive terms in the series and add them all together, um, the general term here is going to be 1 over 2n minus 1. Um, if I add all these together here, do you think this series is going to converge or diverge? This part of the series is actually going to diverge because this behaves like the harmonic series. Um, and we can use one of the comparison tests to prove that if we wanted to. Um, and then likewise, if we just take all the negative terms, the negative one-half, minus one-fourth, minus one-sixth, and so on, the general term here is going to be minus 1 over 2n. Um, again, this is this behaves like the harmonic series, except um, it's just half of the harmonic series. So what's going to happen with this? It's going to be negative infinity. It's also going to diverge, right? So if we just take the positive terms or we just take the negative terms in this series, both of those series diverge. So this series is what we call conditionally convergent. So it's convergent on the condition that the terms alternate. We could actually rearrange these terms so that it diverges. So this, this is kind of a weird idea. And, and it's not really that important that you totally understand it right now. Um, if you take some higher level classes, it might be important. But if I write these terms in a different order, I could write it so that this diverges. Um, 
and, and there's different ways we could do it. I could also write these in any order so that they converge to any number I want. Now, that kind of defies logic, because if we add a finite number of terms together, does it matter what order we add them together? It doesn't matter, right? I could, if I add the numbers from 1 to 10 together, I could add 5 plus 7 plus 3 plus 9 plus 8. It, it doesn't matter what, I, what order I add them, I'm going to get 55 either way, right? Or any way I do it. That's not true since we have an infinite list of positive numbers and an infinite list of negative numbers. I can use any number of these terms that I want first, and then any number of terms that I want from this list next. And uh, as long as I'm picking numbers from both lists and I'm adding them all together, I'm including them all, um, I can make them add up to anything I want. Seems kind of crazy, doesn't it? Let's, let's say I wanted to make them add up to pi. So I want all of these terms here. I want to order them in a way that they add up to pi. I could describe the way I would do that by saying, okay, I'm going to add up terms in this positive list until I get bigger than pi. All right? Then I'm going to take the terms in the negative list and add them on until I get below pi. And then I'm going to go back to the positive list and add on the terms that I've, I left off until I get back above pi and keep going back and forth. And so since the terms are getting smaller and smaller, it's going to be getting closer and closer to pi. Isn't that weird? Here's where the idea of a partial sum is important. In this series right here, we're adding the terms together in this order. And if we add them together in this order, we can figure out what they're going to add up to pretty close to the exact value um, just by adding up a certain number of terms. So the next question we want to answer is, how close to the actual value are we? Um, and so let's say I add up the first 100 terms of the harmonic series, the alternating harmonic series. What would my error be? Why? Because it's the next one, it's the maximum error. Okay, um, so the maximum error would be 1 over 101, so a little bit less than 1 100th. Um, what would be the sign of my error? If I added up the first 100 terms, would that be an overestimate or an underestimate? So since the 100 first term would be positive, um, that means that the sign of the error is positive, and so we have an underestimate. So if we add up the first 100 terms, we know that the sum we get is actually going to be an underestimate but we know it's an underestimate by less than 1 100 first, okay, so, or about a 1 100. Um, if I wanted to make sure that I had accuracy to the nearest thousandth, let's say that um, I'm, I'm taking a test on the AP test and I have to be to the nearest thousandth, and so how many terms would I have to add up to guarantee that I'm within 1 1 thousandth of the actual answer? 999, 999 terms. Why? Yeah, if we go to the next term, it would be 1 over 1,000. All right, so that, that tells me that um, the error term or the truncation error is just the next term in the series.